Hello, my friends, and welcome to Paulina Art. Today, I'm going to be doing this fun, spooky Halloween painting. This is my own design. I'm going to leave on the description box below a link to my Facebook page where you can download the pattern for free. If you've seen my previous Halloween painting with the witch, the process of doing this one is very similar. This painting is very easy to do. It doesn't require any special techniques. All you need is patience in order to create the different layers. For this composition, I'm using very basic colors. I am using black, white, and my primary colors, blue, yellow, and red. Those are the only colors that you need. I wanted to make this Halloween painting very lively. If you would like to see how I created this fun and spooky Halloween painting, stay with me and let's paint together. Okay, I have put several strips of painter's tape. I overlap them so they all stick together. And I'm using this bowl as the measurement for my moon. Depending on the size of your surface, you could use a small styrofoam plate. This is a dessert styrofoam plate. If your painting is larger, you could use a larger size plate or whatever plate you have at home. For me, this bowl is going to be the perfect size for my moon. What I'm gonna do now, I, I taped it over a plastic tablecloth so I can lift it easily. And now I'm going to trace And there's going to be what I'm going to use for my moon. I'm going to cut it now. Today I'm working on 11 by 14 acrylic and oil paper which I have primed already with a light coat of gesso. I drew a line here is about one and a half inches because this is where I want my ground to be. I have placed the moon right in the center. Now we're going to start with the sky and I'm going to start with my Liquitex matte medium. This way my paint is going to flow better. You can also use folk art blending gel. I don't have a lot of this left and I'm using a large filbert brush. With some of my matte medium I'm going to apply a light coat. And I'm going to mix a little bit of blue with white. If you've seen my other Halloween tutorial, I started the same way. All of my Halloween tutorials are going to start the same way. And I'm going to start right above the line that I drew. See how nice the acrylic paint flows when you use acrylic medium. Some people like to use water, but water doesn't, doesn't work for me. I'm now going to move to my blue. I'm going to add a drop of black to my blue. Very dark, dark blue. Now I'm going to do the top with this color.
Once I'm happy with this guy, I'm gonna do the same at the bottom. I'm gonna start with the black. I'm gonna add some medium first because this one is dried up a bit. I'm gonna start with the black. And I'm gonna add white just to make the gradient of color. And we now have to let this first layer dry. You can use a hair dryer if you want to speed up the process. Once the background is dry, we're going to peel off our tape that is covering the space, which is going to be the moon. I'm now switching to a smaller filbert brush. And with my matte medium, white, and a dab of blue, I'm going to create a very pale blue. And this is the color I'm going to use for the moon. I'm going to fix this side, the sides of the moon a little bit. And I want my strokes in this way so I can create the roundness of the moon. If you went outside the boundaries, like I did here, just pick a damp brush and that will fix it right away. It doesn't matter if the moon is not perfect, perfect, because this is just going to be a background. With a Q-tip, I'm going to pick up some white and I'm going to dab a few dots in here. And with my brush, I'm just going to dab them just to create a moon-like effect, some of the texture of the moon. And we can do the same with some light blue. I'm going to pick up some blue. And I'm going to do a few clouds, very, very easy clouds. I'm just going to slide my brush. This has, I'm going to pick up a bit of my acrylic medium, my matte medium, just to make sure it flows well. Just a few. going to pick up some medium and some white and we're going to add a little bit of reflection from the moon down here and again we have to let this layer dry once the background is dry we align our moon and we secure our pattern with painter's tape. We secure it exactly where we want it. And now I'm going to go ahead and trace the pattern with black carbon paper. I have transferred my pattern. I'm going to start by painting the pumpkin and I have a small round brush. I'm going to mix some yellow with red and I'm going to create this pretty orange. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint my pumpkin. I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave my sketch marks and because the moon is light enough, I don't have to paint my pumpkin white first because the color behind I think is light enough that I can get away by painting it orange right away. I'm 
going to mix a small amount of black with red and I'm going to create this dark reddish brown and I'm going to define my pumpkin, do the lines of the pumpkin with this color. And I'm going to add some yellow just to make give it more dimension. Now I'm going to paint the inside of the eye with yellow. When my pumpkin dries, I'm going to start painting the bats. For the bats, I'm going to use my liner brush with black. And I'm going to add enough water so my brush moves freely. You always want water for your liner brush. It's the only time I use water. I'm going to start by defining the bats first. And then I'm going to fill them in. Okay, our bats are done. We're going to go ahead and do the hat and the clothing. And for that, I'm going to pick up some black. And it's going to be very dry on my brush. I just want to create the effect of some kind of material and the canvas or surface itself is going to help me create that when my brush is not very wet with paint. We're going to do the same for the garment. It has to look like it's rags, very old and raggedy. And I want to add movement to the outfit as if the wind is blowing it. I'm using just a small filbert brush for this. Okay, and that's gonna be it for the for the garment. Let's do the branches. With my liner brush, I'm going to do the branches that make the hands of the scarecrow the same as I did the bats. I'm going to line them first. And I want these branches to be very gnarly. Let's go back to the face and we're going to define the eyes with some black and our liner brush. a small round brush and some black. I'm going to start creating trees and branches here. And again, I want these, ver these trees very branchy and very gnarly. I want some roots creeping out on the ground like that. With my liner brush and some black, I'm going to add more fine branches. 
I want everything to have movement and a life of its own. As if the tree was alive, as if the branches were alive. Everything in sync in this Halloween night. With an angled brush, I'm going to pick up white at the tip of my brush and black at the other end. And I'm going to blend it just a bit, not too much. And I'm going to start creating some vegetation around here, like grass growing. While all this dries, with my small filbert brush, I'm going to pick up just a touch of black and I'm going to mix it with the orange that I painted the pumpkin with. And with this color, I'm going to add a bit of a shadow from the hat. Just like that, to give the pumpkin more dimension. We can add some at the bottom here. With a little bit of white on my liner brush, I'm going to start adding some highlights from the moon on some of the branches. Just on, just on this side of the tree to create some um, dimension and on my branches as well, just to give more life to the painting. And we're going to do the same on the branches that create the hands. And the same on this tree. We, with the same brush we did the clothing, we can add a touch of light. Just where the moon might be casting a light. Give more movement to the clothing. Okay, my friends, our painting is just about done. Let's pick up some white and a bit of black. We're going to create this dark gray and we're going to add some shadows at the bottom. Okay, my friends, our scarecrow pumpkin Halloween painting is done. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed doing this painting. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so with a coffee. I'm going to leave a link to my coffee page on the description box below. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like comment below, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future content from me. Please let me know in the comments below if you would like to see another Halloween painting for this season. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.